Many people know that we are in a pretty wild place right now when it comes to real estate. And as you know, it's just not happening here in the Sarasota Bradenton market, but all over the country. Now in the last 12 months or so, I've experienced some really great joys with buyers and then I've also walked with them as they've experienced some disappointments. So during this time, I've learned a lot with working with buyers. So I wanna share with you five things to avoid as a buyer in 2022. Hi, I'm Jill Thomas and I'm here to help. For a lot of you who watch many of my videos and then reach out to me, you say that you like it, that I kind of shoot straight with you, that I try not to cover things up or sugarcoat anything. And then when people come here and they're in person, I shoot even straighter with them because we have to, you know, get into the details. Well, I'm gonna do that in this video as well. I'm gonna be pretty direct with you. And I know that this market is super frustrating for, for so many people. And I really do hope and pray that it does adjust soon. So that's why I want to go through these five things for you to avoid. And really more specifically, it's not just things, but mindsets to avoid because this is such a roller coaster ride. And so I want you to keep your sanity as you jump into this process. Okay, number one, don't compare. Please, <laughs> even though it's easy to do, it's normal and natural to do, but don't compare today's experience to a past one that you've had with buying a home. Or if you're a big fan of HGTV and you watch these shows, that's not even reality in a normal market. So please don't compare it to that because I know you're gonna get pretty frustrated quickly. Right away, your mind's gonna go, well, that's not how I did it before. And this doesn't seem like it's a normal thing. Nothing about this market today is normal because what's gonna happen is if you have these expectations set up in your mind, you're gonna you know, maybe fall in love with the property and there's multiple offers on virtually every property out there that's on the market. And then if you don't get the house or the condo that you fall in love with, you're gonna be you know, just quickly disappointed. So you, know, you have to sort of need to work on some of those expectations a little bit. And then the other thing too, is if you do come down here to look at properties, again, historically, it would be, hey, let's go out for one, two, three days. We'll look at you know, a dozen or so properties, you narrow them down, you pick one you like, you put the offer in on it. Well, right now, if you come down, there might be two or three homes that are close to what you might want. There's not a gob, you know, gobs of homes for you to look at. So in that case, we just sort of narrow down the communities, maybe narrow down locations. Maybe we go see homes that you're not super in love with, but if we need to get behind a gate, you know, I want you to see Florida homes from the inside out and just not from photos or from driving up and down streets. So that's really important. It's a part of the education process. So so just sort of work on some of those expectations in your mind. And even though I know it's very natural for you to do that by default, but just sort of keep that in check in the back of your mind. So again, number one, don't compare. Approach the house buying process with maybe a fresh mind, an open mind, and maybe a little bit of a clean slate. Number two, don't wing it. <laughs> okay, so what I mean by that is because this has changed so much, and like I said, you know, I request that you not base today's market on past experiences. You just can't wing it and say, well, I, I get it. I, I know what this is like. Listen to your real estate agent, ask a ton of questions. And I think that part of the process too is learning what is the current trends or how are contracts written? What's a little bit different today than what it was in the past? Because when the perfect property comes on the market and you really want to go after it, at that moment is not necessarily the best time to have these conversations because you might be kind of blown away a little bit with some of the things that the real estate agent or myself might be presenting to you. So again, that don't compare, be open-minded, but then don't wing it. Learn as much as you can up front so that when it's time to write that first offer, you're going to have a little bit more of a solid foundation in your mind of of how to approach it and what your comfort level is. Now, I think probably at least four times in the last week or so, I have said this to different buyers that my job, I feel like my job is to give you as much information as possible because things have changed so much. So 
here's what your competition might be doing. Here's what other buyers are doing. This is what the sellers might be doing. Or even with the type of property you're looking at, I might throw out some other ideas. So I just say, I feel like my job is to give you as much information as possible. And then I want you to make up your mind based on your comfort level. I'm not gonna push you to do something you're not comfortable with, but I think it's really important for you to understand as much as possible. So number two, don't wing it. Get as much information as possible as you can so you can kind of figure out what your comfort level is. So when it's time to move forward, you can do that with a little bit more ease. Number three, don't be inflexible. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that's even grammatically correct. I don't think we're supposed to use double negatives, but it just fits the pattern of my five points. But basically, I'm just asking that you try to be a little bit flexible. And this is what I mean. I know it's really hard because you have these dreams. You've been maybe dreaming about your Florida home for a long time, and now you're ready to pull the trigger. You've been looking online, looking at homes. You're thinking about the lifestyle that you would want. I mean, here it is, middle of February, it's beautiful out, it's sunny. You know, what more can we ask for, right? You're thinking about a house with a beautiful pool or a nice view, or maybe you want a condo that's near downtown that's walkable to things, you know? So you're thinking about all of this stuff that you would like in a house. But then, now that you're ready to, to move forward, you feel like those dreams are just so out of reach right? And so that can be really discouraging. So that's why I suggest if you could just be a little bit flexible with some of the things that you would like if you're really serious about buying here. So, so often when people are giving me their criteria, then I'll throw out some other ideas and say, okay, well, what if instead of just focusing on this, what if we add this as a different layer to maybe open up some options to give you more variety and maybe, you know, we're going to increase our chances of you being able to find a place that you like. So if you can just be a little bit flexible and then and also I know too that I'm talking to a lot of people who have you know friends or family members who bought even just nine months 12 months ago they go well I just want what what they got <laughs> well and and now maybe you're priced out of that area just because the prices have changed so much in the last year so that may not be attainable in that way so I certainly understand it can be very discouraging very disheartening but I'm here for you so I'm not asking you to give up on your dreams at all I still want let's embrace that but just to be open to some other thoughts and ideas and also too when you're down here sometimes you don't know until you don't know what you don't know so I'll make suggestions of other names neighborhoods it might, might not even be like close to even what you want but sometimes when people get in there and go oh yeah okay yeah I, I do like this because you just didn't even know it was there so that's why I say just don't be super inflexible but be open to a few things number four don't be surprised yes please <laughs> Don't be surprised. Okay, and this is what I mean. Okay, here you're watching this video and I am telling you that as a buyer, things are a challenge. You're probably watching other videos, you're reading articles, you're hearing these stories and you think, okay, Jill, it's okay. I've got my expectations set up in my mind. They're healthy expectations. I get it. And then we write that first offer and it's not just a good offer. It's a great offer. It's the kind of offer you would think you would have never written ever in your life for a house. You know, the terms, the price, everything. You're like, oh my goodness, any seller would be thrilled to have this offer. And you're absolutely right. And then if the seller doesn't take your offer, <laughs> you're surprised, right? <laughs> it's like instant disappointment. Your stomach sinks and you think, I I did everything right. I, I did it the way I should have, I was supposed to do it. I did, I did the things that Jill suggested I do and you still didn't get it. And sadly that is happening. So you will be surprised. I, I know I say, don't be surprised. You will be surprised because everybody is the first time or two when they kind of get that sinking stomach feeling and, and they get very frustrated and disappointed. So um, it's more tongue in cheek, don't be surprised, but, but you will be. And then in time, you kind of get used to it a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and you go, okay, okay, I, I really get it now because right now it's in theory how this all works. And then it's not until you really experience it and you see it firsthand or, you know, we go and look at a home and you see agents inside the house and agents lined up outside the house to get in and there's cars everywhere. It's like, you know, it's more like a garage sale. It looks like then um, looking at homes and that's very eye-opening to people. So that's why I say, don't be surprised, but, but you will be and that's okay. And then number five, don't beat yourself up. <laughs> Buying a home is such an emotional 
process. It's a personal thing. It's an expensive thing, right? And then when when you do get that surprised moment and you do feel surprised and you feel like, oh my goodness, is this gonna happen? You start to second guess everything. You second guess your choices. You second guess, I should have started looking sooner. I should have done more with my money. I should, you know, or less with my money maybe. You know, I should have done things differently. I should have written the offer different. I should have done this. I should have done that. And you get very emotional and you want to kind of beat yourself up over it. But I really encourage you not to do that. Just take a deep breath, go for a walk, clear your mind, <laughs> and then kind of reevaluate and then recalibrate, you know, and, and then we're gonna start over from where it is right now, moving forward. So that's why I really encourage you. It can it's very emotional. People, you know, just certainly get upset just because it doesn't seem fair or we think that the sellers are being greedy. There's all these different things that come up. So just do the best you can with where you're at right now. And I'm here to help you with that. So number five, don't beat yourself up. Well, sometimes I have buyers who apologize to me because, you know, maybe we've written a few offers and we're not getting anything under contract. Well, the reality of it is, it is much harder right now to work with buyers than it has ever been at least in my experience in the last like 13 and a half years since I've been licensed because you do you have to try more than once usually to get a house under contract and but I tell the buyers it's not your fault you're 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 doing these steps right they're not comparing they're coming in with a clear mind they're not winging it they're listening they're they're getting information they're trying to make really good wise choices based on information things that they're comfortable with and then they're being super flexible as well. They're open to so many things. They think, they say, oh my goodness, I never would have thought I was gonna consider a property like this. But in the end, you know, they're loving it and they're good. So, so like I said, they, they sometimes will get very apologetic to me, Jill, I'm so sorry, but they're not doing anything wrong. I always tell them, as long as you're being nice, as long as you're a nice person and you're fun to work with, I'm good with all of that. I'm willing to keep going and keep trying and keep working as long as you are. I'm not gonna quit as long as you're not gonna quit. And I and I probably, again, I'm just, I'm shooting very straight with you guys. These are very broad, broad stroke statements. I mean, there's some people I'm getting under contract sooner than others. It just depends. It depends on the property. It depends on the price point. It depends on, you know, a lot of other factors. So it's not that it's an impossible thing, but again, I'm trying to set these expectations for you. So just so you can keep your sanity, you know, so we can do, have a good time and make the most of this process. Okay, well, if you're new to my channel, hi, I am Jill Thomas and I'm a real estate agent here in the Sarasota Bradenton market and each week or at least hopefully most each week <laughs> I try to bring new videos about living here in the Sunshine State what it's like specifically to be here in the Sarasota Bradenton Lakewood Ranch Venice area and then of course I like to talk about real estate so if you've been thinking about making a move then this might be the channel for you to follow so tap that subscribe button hit the notification bell and keep on watching and then I am truly here to help you I want to help you make the best decision for you and your family. So please give me a call, text or email me. I'm here to help. Like I said, I'll shoot straight with you and not just about the things that you need to do, but I'll talk to you about properties, things like that. There have been times I've practically talked people out of buying a home and it's not that I tell them not to buy it, but let's be straight about it. And then you make the best decision for you. Is this this house? There's some risk level to it. Is that something that you're comfortable with? And so again, you make the decision for yourself. I'm just here to help provide information and give some guidance. <laughs> so I'm available for you. Well, if you like this video, please hit the like button and then you guys have a great day. Take care.